The Committee of the Whole is back in, in order. I believe when we broke yesterday, we were on Section 21. We're on Section 21. A anyone? Any comments? Any objections? Anyone? Section 22, Cultural Sports Ambassador Fund, Senator Morrison. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to thank the Oversight Chair and, and my colleagues for uh, working to establish uh, this program. And I, I just wanted to give a little update and, you know, been following this through since the establishment and, and to assure that the program is uh, working effectively um, as the rules were adopted in February of 2016 uh, without objections from the legislature. We have seen uh, at least reports from GVB um, with the establishment of the application for uh, packet, uh, uh, an increase of our, our, our organizations in sports and cultural, uh, in the cultural uh, or the cultural organizations that are are uh, fulfilling fulfilling this process, and as a result, we're seeing um, that uh, GVB is able to assist many of these organizations. When when we when we first uh, addressed this program, Mr. Chair, uh, we were hoping um, that we can help. Many of these organizations, I think many of us all know uh, er, throughout the year um, that we have our, our sports ambassadors, our culture ambassadors, we see them come to our offices, to this legislature seeking support. And, and that was uh, one of the main uh, reasons why we created and established this program so that we can help our ambassadors uh, that go out and promote Guam in, in many places that are not our market destinations, uh, and, and we've, we've helped them. Uh, I just want to say, as a former athlete, that, that you know, uh, and, and seeing the struggles that these athletes go through to, to fundraise or to represent Guam, uh, and spending most of their time trying to raise the revenues to represent Guam, uh, this program has definitely been a vital, um, been vital for many of our our youth and of course even our, our adult programs that are helping to represent Guam. I encourage my colleagues, Mr. Chair, that uh, as I've done when when requests come into our let to each of our offices, I know we've always experienced this, uh, or to this legislature, I encourage that uh, each one of us uh, redirect these individuals, especially if they're in Cal Ripken, Little League, Babe Ruth, uh, and then Gift Pago, Skip, uh, Talent Box, all these programs that are, are clearly meet the criteria of the rules of uh, representing Guam, that we, we redirect them to this program, educate them, bring uh, much needed awareness to uh, help them understand there, there is a program that is working and can assist them uh, uh, with their expenses to represent Guam. So I just wanted to give a little update, Mr. Chair. I just, uh, I know it's a fairly new program, but um, we're seeing a lot of positive results uh, from our, our, these community organizations uh, that represent Guam really well. And also going back to some of the experiences we've had here with, uh, at the national level with teams coming here to, to seek support uh, uh, for, uh, in, in one case, uh, when we've hosted, um, um, we've hosted uh, the World Cup in Guam, one of the plays or pool plays that were taking place here in Guam. I, I, it is my hope that through this program that we can direct resources uh, knowing uh, in the forefront these activities that are going to be taking place in Guam, that this is the program that we can also uh, work with, build upon, and direct resources to this so that uh, there's no need to have our athletes sit out in this room 
and hoping uh, uh, for support or, or you know, each of one of our votes on certain measures. I think we built a program that allows uh, this government and our people to, to work through an application progress, I mean, process that uh, um, clearly meets the criteria of uh, representing Guam. You know, this is the program for that. Uh, we have to uh, uh, ensure that going forward, you know, I've seen it too many times uh, that the uh, parents uh, coming into our, our, our offices uh, separate from their uh, organization seeking support, not knowing about some of these programs that are uh, available. So um, I encourage the, my colleagues, I mean, the Sports Ambassador, Culture Ambassador Program, uh, maybe we can also expand this in the future. I, know, I thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and the Oversight Chair for uh, uh, working to ensure that this program continues to support our community. And I think that as, we, as GVB has reported, uh, since the creation of, or establishment of the rules and seeing a high demand and downloads, downloads of the application form, um, you know, I think in the future we have a, a clear program um, that uh, uh, at least with these organizations planning forward that, you know, they, they will get their, at least within 90 days, get their applications into GVB and, and allow them to uh, go through the process and get them support and forehand. Um, I, I think that if this continues to um, fulfill its mission, I really, I mean, hope one day that you know a lot of these organizations will know first at least they can exhaust what programs are out there. I'm not saying they, they, they don't need to come to the legislature or the governor's office or any other institution out there for other support. I'm just saying that this is uh, our way of the government getting behind our sports ambassadors, our culture ambassadors, uh, uh, assisting them in a big way for promoting Guam and representing Guam well. So I thank you, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Any other comments or any objection to the appropriation 23? I mean, I'm sorry, 22. 23. Any comments, Senator Tom Edda? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to make an amendment to uh, Section 23 uh, on line 25 at the end. Um, we'll add the sentence and should not be used and will, shall not be used for off island travel, period. On, on 23, at the end of 23, on line 25? That's correct. So the amendment by Senator Tom Etta is and shall not be used for off-island travel. Any objection to the amendment? Um, Mr. Chair, the Guafi uh, Inc. is a nonprofit organization that has a, a um, I guess, a collaboration with the Tennessee uh, um, organizers that host the biggest uh, barbecue competition uh, in the United States. And there has been a collaboration between Guam's uh, nonprofit organization and that barbecue organization back in the United States. And, and with their collaboration, they're hoping to bring um, uh, um, the contest uh, that will bring premier um, folks in the uh, cooking industry out to uh, compete and go over to compete. I know that uh, the barbecue uh, block party here in Guam brings out all the athletes, I mean, all the chefs, uh, you can call them uh, uh, athletes of, of, of uh, culinary sport uh, to compete uh, in who makes the best barbecue. And I just think that um, Putting that language would put um, a hamper in what is being worked on right now to bring international competition back here. We do have international competition from those who come from Korea and uh, other uh, places of Asia, 
but I know that this nonprofit organization has been together for more than several years uh, to promote uh, how we cook or how we barbecue here on Guam and share it with the rest of Asia and of course the United States and, and the rest of the world. So um, I just know that that may put a hamper uh, into the program that they've been working with, with the international competition and the, and the United States competition. Is that an objection? Okay. Yes. Uh, anybody else? There's been an objection to the amendment. Those in favor of the amendment, please indicate. So should I make, can I make closing yes. remarks then? Sure, please. Um, and, so, um, and so basically, um, the way the program here is actually um, um, described is that it is a program to promote and perpetuate traditional cooking methods um, using wood fire, actually, um, and, you know, putting it in the language that we all are familiar with. It's basically to support the art of barbecuing. And, uh, and I think that that, you know, really, if we're going to promote it and perpetuate it, then let's share it with our people here and and, and be able to fund this organization uh, who, who, I don't know if they're the ones that host the various uh, events here on island. Um, but then, you know, $25,000 to f uh, basically send off a team to go to the States, I, I think that's probably where the commercial sponsor should be able to step in and, and fund these things. I just... I just can't, you know, I, I just have a difficult time with funding $25,000 uh, to send a team off island to go barbecue, to participate in a barbecue competition. So Great. go for the vote then, Mr. Speaker. How about Chairman? All right. All those in favor of the amendment, please indicate by raising your hand. Motion passes. On the uh, section 23 with the uh, appropriation and the amendment, any further amendments? Twenty-four. No, 23, we just gaveled with your guafi. Twenty-four. Any? Twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty six. Send Dragon. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, if I can just get an explanation on the allocation of Section 26, $100,000. Is this a whole new appropriation for this organization? Please. It's a new program, sir. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I do have an amendment, a proposed amendment that is circulating, and I want to thank the good chairman of the Veterans committee for co-sponsoring this amendment and the amendment would in tw section 26 reduce the total amount that is being allocated from 100,000 to 70,000 and I know that you may prefer that we go section subsection by subsection but just for the information of our colleagues where the $30,000 would go is $20,000 would go towards the Fallen Heroes Monument, which many of our Fallen Heroes parents and family members have been waiting for the last three years to try to get that underway and constructed and completed by Memorial Day next year. And then the Good Senator Veterans uh, Affairs will be allocating a portion of that to Reverend Tax for the Special Recognition License Plate. So. Mr. Chairman, if you would enter, if you're going to entertain section by section, then the first amendment would be to reduce the amount appropriated in section 26 to 70,000 $70, dollars, please. 
Anyone wish to speak on the amendment? No objection. No objection. Senator Uggen, you have the floor then for the additional ones before the service and reporting requirements. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, the uh, subsequent section would be a new section, section 29, which would take $25,000 of that $30,000 that was just made available and allocated specifically to the Department of Administration for the construction of the Fallen Heroes Monument. And it would read, notwithstanding any provision of law, to the contrary, the sum of $25,000 is hereby appropriated from the fiscal year 2017 Tourist Attraction Fund to the Department of Administration for the purposes of funding the construction of the Fallen Heroes Monument pursuant to Public Law 33-88 at the, at the Adelope Parade Field of the Ricardo J. Berdalio Governor's Complex. The Department shall work in collaboration with the Fallen Heroes of the Pacific Foundation, Guam, in the release of such proceeds to ensure the timely completion of the Fallen Heroes Monument. And the appropriation in this section shall not lapse and shall remain available pursuant to this act until fully expended. Mr. Chairman, that's the proposed amendment, please. No objection. Anyone wish to speak on it? Just go. Senator Blas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, while I support the amendment, um, I'm just wondering from the author if there has been any feedback with regards to what the cost would, have, would be um, for this monument. The initial feedback based on the public hearing, uh, good senator, is that they're requesting the $25,000 and that they anticipate using almost the entire amount and they will remain within that particular budget allocation limitation. But aside from that, I asked them if by any chance they can provide some drawings and they said that to date, uh, they have yet to complete the drawings and they're still in the process of finalizing that. Fortunately, they're getting some assistance from, uh, I hope I don't preclude this too quickly, but they're trying to get some direct assistance from the Guam National Guard so that they can keep the cost to a very minimum. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, I, except for maybe the numbering, maybe can we leave the numbering up to, it, it may be a new 26 and renumber the, I mean new number 27 and then renumber the two so that we have the last two as the last two, okay? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Any objection to this appropriation? No Senator Arkin, you still have the floor. Senator yeah. Tom. Yeah, so Mr. Chairman, the last uh, new section here um, basically requests for uh, $5,000 from that $30,000 that was peeled away. Uh, and that's to fund the fabrication of the uh, the master templates for the special recognition veterans license plate. Now these license plates are um, basically to um, uh, recognize those who are recipients of the medals of valor, and that's the um, Distinguished Service Cross, the Silver Star, um, and the um, Bronze Star uh, with the V device, um, and also the Purple Heart. Now. We know that, for example, the Purple Heart, there's uh, approximately uh, 200 uh, recipients who are residing here on Guam. Uh, for the Distinguished Service Cross, there's, there's even a lot less than that. But, but this special recognition license plate are for those veterans or retirees who, in the heat of combat, um, actually um, put themselves in the line of fire and, uh, and they really need to be given that recognition. Although they receive the medals, uh, usually throughout the country, uh, these recipients are provided with special license plates. Now the $5,000 pays just for the master template and, and they'll make uh, revenue and tax, will then order the license plates and the veterans themselves will then pay for uh, the license plates. Now it's important, timing here is very important because uh, it is hoped that we will have those license plates available um, uh, by Veterans Day, uh, which is very significant. So 
uh, that, Mr. Chairman, uh, is what that $5,000 allocation is for. And that amount uh, is actually the amount that was received from uh, revenue and tax. Thank you. Any other comments? Any objection? Hearing none. There's um, a law also that former Speaker Ben had um, created. It's called the Mas Melagen uh, Sacrificio, uh, meaning that the ultimate price of our veterans uh, that have never been recognized uh, by the government of Guam, that uh, former Speaker Ben had actually made it now the responsibility of the legislature to recognize those individuals with several things, a plaque, uh, a Guam flag uh, and a resolution. And uh, that has never, he said he was going to try to fund it uh, later on, and, but he, it hasn't been. And so, and I know I've been uh, speaking with the Veterans Affairs Office, they would like to continue with it and to find the rest of the veterans to do that. So the request is for at least a, I would say about you know, $1,000 to purchase uh, the Guam flax and the plaques uh, to be able to give to those uh, families of those veterans who have sacrificed. Okay. Um, can we take that up elsewhere? We Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Speaker. Um, service requirement, service and reporting requirement. Um, I believe you have an amendment. Uh, Senator. See, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, on the services and reporting requirements, I do have an amendment. And if I can read the um, amendment on, on uh, page 101, uh, sub item A. Uh, organizations receiving funding from the TAF shall provide community services in the amount of 10 hours of service per $1,000 appropriated to them for activities and or events. These services provided pursuant to the respective TAF appropriations to the Guam Visitors Bureau in coordination with the general manager of the Chamorro Village shall establish procedures for certifying community service hours and issuing community service hours certifica certification reports. Uh, Mr. Chair, at the public hearing, uh, at the informational hearing on all the um, uh, nonprofit organizations that did their report, there are a lot of um, the NPOs that um, promote uh, their their uh, organizations at the Chamorro Village, and this would be a way to further uh, be accountable and transparent on the community service work that the nonprofit organizations done. And, and, and that would be the first um, amendment. I, well, I have a full page, but I think, do we want to go uh, sub item by sub item? Let's, let's bifurcate it. All right, on that first amendment, any objection? Any comments from anybody? Do you have a copy of theirs? It's... Can you go all make sure that all the senators have a copy of Senator Tina's? Get this back to him. Selena, get this back. Yes, I have it. It was it passed out two days ago. Here, just just give it to Senator. It's a bit, copies have been made. Just let him have a seat.
Any objections to the First Amendment? Yes. Yes. Any objection? No. On your Second Amendment, uh, Senator Hina? Give that back to her. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, um, sub item B would remain the same, and then we would add a sub item C, which would be annual financial reports and community service hours certification reports shall be submitted to the Guam Visitors Bureau on August 1st of every year. Again, as we look at the budgets and as we work on the budget, we want to make sure that the, the nonprofit organizations submit and, and the, their, their reports to GVB. Any objection to the amendment of reports being filed by August 1st? Any objection? Your next amendment. And sub item D, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, all research reports, literatures, books, brochures, pamphlets, or similar doc document, including but not limit limited to mobile applications and software produced using TAF shall be made accessible to the Guam Visitors Bureau. Any comments on this amendment? Any objection? Any comment or any objection? Senator Torres. Uh, just for clarification, so anything that's produced can be, uh, per your amendment, then can be used by GVB. So are there any concerns with proprietary uh, rights or anything like that? Usually the agreement is that, that the finished product will go to GVB. But if there is a, um, a brochure, literature, or pamphlet that GVB wanted to access that they could call them up and say, hey, can we use it? So it's just being able to make sure that GVB can access it. My only concern is... It doesn't is take it away from, from, from the owner's proprietary right. Okay. I just wanted to be... And, and this is something that would be consistent with their grant application yes. and the understanding of the, re, of the receipt of funds. Right. Okay. All right. No, I'm good with it then. Thank you. Any comments or Further questions? Any objection? Thank you. The last section on authority to transfer. No Colleagues, thank you very much for your um, assistance in moving through this chapter. Uh, the next chapter is going to be miscellaneous appropriations, which may take some time, and I understand some of you have a meeting. So um, we'll break for lunch early, and um, we'll see everybody back at 2 o'clock. <laughs>